In this video we're going to see how to show an image using TimeLeaf in Spring Boot. Actually that's kind of a high level view of what we're going to do. We're going to continue an example that we already started where we can upload an image, save it to disk, and also save some metadata information about that disk to the database. We've already done that in a previous video. In this video we're going to do a bit of refactoring to show a confirmation page once the user has saved a specimen with an image. For this we're going to need a few things. An image. We're also going to need to make a static photos directory or images directory if you wish in our project. We'll need to use the to absolute path method of the paths very uh, object or class if you wish in Java. And then we'll need to use timeleaf's thsrc attribute with a path in quotations. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's start by making a confirmation page. We can reuse a lot of the logic that we put into the start page, so I will go ahead and copy this and simply paste it in the same directory, and we'll make it a success page. Now inside of this page, we will put a confirmation down towards the bottom that is going to show the photo that was just uploaded. I'll put a marker for that right under our form. We'll say img th src because we're going to use a timeleaf library. I'm going to leave that empty for just a moment. We'll come back and fill that in in a moment. Then we'll say alt because we always should have an alt. We'll say photo upload confirmation. And then terminate our img tag. To fill this out, what are we going to need? Well, this is going to bring up the location where our image is stored. So we're going to need some metadata about our image. And you might remember that we made a class that will hold that metadata. And that class is called photo in our DTO package. Uh, it's a plain old DTO. It just has some attributes. It looks a lot like the table where the photo metadata is stored. Additionally, we know that we have some indication of what the specimen is that this photo is associated with because it prints the specimen stuff up towards the top. So we need both a photo object and we need a specimen object to be available to this HTML page. And how do we make those available? Well, remember, that's something that our controller does. We have several updates we want to do to our controller, so I'll put this into high def. First of all, let's take a look at the save specimen endpoint. First thing that we want to change is that notice it's returning a string. And a string is simply returning the error page or it's returning the start page, but it's not actually returning any objects along with the start page or the error page. If we want to return objects, we need to change this to return model and view. Import. Now we notice that our return statements are invalid because they're returning a string, but we've changed our return type. Luckily, this is an easy fix as well. First, I'll create a new model and view object at the top. Now, where I had the return error, I can say model and view, set view name, which just says which page do we want to show when we return this. Now, here's an interesting consideration. One thought is we should not exit a method in the middle. In other words, we shouldn't have a mid method return statement. But on the other hand, we have an exception here. And when we have an exception, we have to think, can we continue to do other logic in this method or not? In this case, the exception was on saving the specimen. And the next operation we're doing is associating a photo to that specimen. So if we have not saved the specimen, if something went wrong in that process, there's no need to even try to save the photo. So I will go ahead and do a mid method return and say return model and view. While mid method returns aren't always a good idea, one place where it occasionally does make sense is in a catch block in a case just like this where we say if we have not been successful to this point there's no reason to continue. Now we go down a bit below and we can repeat the same logic on the catch block for saving the photo. So model and view, set view name, and then once again return model and view. Now finally those are the error cases, but what about the happy path? What do we do in that case? Let's do a couple things here. First of all, this return value up here, instead of doing it like that, let's say model and view dot set view name. Remember, I used to have start there, but I've made a new page called success, kind of like a confirmation page. Let's go ahead and associate this with success. 
Next, if it is successful, that means it did not return out of this catch block and it did not return out of this catch block. So the only place we know that everything was successful is where my cursor is right now on line 199. Now we also know that our HTML page, the success page, needs some attribute from the specimen that was just saved and it needs some attribute from the photo that was just saved. Now fortunately, because we're using a model in view, we can simply set these two objects on that model in view and then return the whole thing. So let's take care of that. Looks like photo is out of scope, but that's an easy fix. We can simply take this declaration here and move it above the try block. Remember that a variable scope is defined as where it's alive, which is the point from which it is declared until it reaches the closed curly of the block where it was declared. Since I've moved the photo up here now, it's in scope in the highlighted area that I'm showing. Before, it was only in scope within this try block. And finally, let's fix the return value so that it's returning our model and view and so that it is, it is also matching our method signature. And with that, our controller is in good shape. With that now, we can return to our success page and we can finish out the IMG tag that we put together earlier. This is a little bit tricky. We start with an at symbol and open curly, close curly, because in Timeleaf, that's just how we refer to a URL. But within that, we have to do a little bit of math. So I'll do dollar sign open curly, close curly, which means, okay, I can put a bit of logic here. Doing all that, it looks like I dropped a close curly, so we should be good now. Now we're going to say single quote slash photos, which is the directory where we'll save the photo. And then we can access our photo dot file name. Now what's photo dot file name? Well, take a look at our project and our photo class. And you see we have a file name here, which represents the name of the image. There is one little consideration here, and it's a bit particular to the environment that we're using. What we would normally do when we upload a photo is we would put it somewhere in a publicly available directory so that we can simply go out and reference that and have a link to that directory. Well, because we're running locally, it essentially is starting up a Tomcat instance and then serving up all of our pages, but that Tomcat instance is very ephemeral. It's not something that's around forever. So uh, just in debugging, it's not easy for us to set up a public directory on this computer. So I need to make that path local to this project so that our Timeleaf instance with Tomcat will be able to render this image. So a couple changes I'm about to make. If I take a look at the photo DAO, I see this is where I'm putting together the folder photos. But one trick, the way it's currently set up, it's hanging right off of C drive and it's not a folder that I've made publicly available. So what I want to do is make it relative to resources because that's where static resources belong in our Spring Boot project. But to do that, I need to know a little bit more information about the photo in this method. You see right now, all I have is the image that was uploaded, but within this method, I don't have access to the photo object. We see it in a different method, but that doesn't help us. So I go back to the service where it's calling the save and creating a new record in the database and then also calling save image and storing the image to disk. And I'm going to add a second parameter to this so that we can send the photo metadata from the service layer all the way down to the DAO. We'll need to go back and update those method signatures. And we see that a simple alt enter will help us and double click refactor. And now let's make sure that our photo DAO looks as we expect. We see that it is accepting that photo operator. And now let's go take a look at the DAO. And we see that photo indeed has been added to the method signature. So a couple clicks and all that refactoring worked out for us. And we even see in the save image that the photo is getting passed down. So now the only work that we need to do is in this photo DAO, we need to, to do a little bit more math on where this photo lives. Let's start by figuring out what path we're currently in. We'll say paths.get and then a period is kind of the universal indication of my current directory. Put my cursor on git and in, in IntelliJ IDEA, control alt v, we'll take a look at that method, see what it returns and create a variable to hold what that method returns. We'll call this one current path. Now from the current path, we can get the absolute path with a fairly straightforward method. Current path dot to absolute path. 
What does to absolute path mean? It means how do we get to this location if we're all, all the way up at the start of the directory structure, which is typically hierarchical. So a C drive on Windows or a root on Unix, Linux, so on and so forth, it'll give us the whole way back all the way to there. We can save this in a local variable, once again, Control-Alt-V, and we'll call it absolute path. Now that will take us to our project root, which is essentially what you see here as enterprise. Underneath that, we have source main, and then we want to jump down to resources. So now we can say photo dot set path, and we'll start with our absolute path. Then we'll add to that the relative path of where we are right now uh, in this project. So src, we'll start with a slash. src main resources static photos. We no longer need this folder. And finally, we do go down to our paths.get and we update the folder from the relative slash photos that we had earlier to now photo.getPath. If you don't see where that came from, note that we're doing photo.setPath here and then photo.getPath here. So what we're putting into this unit is essentially this entire unit right here. Let's go ahead and add an ending slash after that photos path. Just a few more things that I need to clean up now. First of all, in the controller, we no longer need to set the path of the photo because we know we're doing that in the DAO. Secondly, in the success HTML, I realized I made a mistake that HRC should be SRC. Next, let's go to resources and make a path where these photos will be stored. It's a little bit tricky because we know that resources is source main resources. But then we need a folder named static. That means anything that doesn't change, anything like a CSS file, a JavaScript file, anything like that, or in our case, a series of photos. Now you notice we don't currently have a subdirectory called static, so we can make one. Right click on resources, new, and then directory, and then static, just like so. After that, we can make a subdirectory of this called photos. Watch case and spelling, make sure that it matches up exactly as you have it right here. We can start our app. I will say one thing when I noticed when I was running through this in the debugger, I noticed for Spring Boot, Tomcat, IntelliJ to realize that this folder existed, I occasionally had to shut down and restart IntelliJ and then everything was fine. So if you get an error on this next part, just shut, shut down, restart the project, uh, see if that fixes it. We restart the application. Let's go ahead and choose Redbud1 and associate this picture with our specimen. Hit submit. And notice that when the success page renders, it shows us all the details that we had before. But in addition, it shows us this confirmation of the Redbud photo that we've uploaded. We can watch it in the debugger as well as I choose the file. And then choose Submit. And we see IntelliJ lights up orange indicating that there's a breakpoint. We see we've come to our saved specimen, F8, F8, F8. And this saves our specimen into the database. Now we create our new photo, we save the image, and we see that this takes us from controller to service. So first of all, save the photo to the database, save the metadata to the database. Secondly, save the image itself. I just hit F9 so it advanced to the next breakpoint. Nonetheless, you can see information about the absolute path. Since this is a Windows machine, it's going back to C root. And then if you want, we can go to the photo in just a moment and we can see the full path where it's saving that. We'll simply highlight this unit right here, right click, and let's do an evaluate expression. And we see that it has a full path to C users, administrator, idea, projects, enterprise. And then that's the root of my project on this computer. And then from there, source, main, resources, static photos. And that takes it all the way down here to this directory that we see here. I'll go ahead and choose F9 and then F9 again, and that will render our page. And once again, we see success. So this video has shown how to make an image available to a page by using some of the time leaf tags. I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.